I think this wasn't where you were going with that, but I think there is something important to be said in there. And this is very true with the, the beta testing that was done. The people that were doing the beta testing, those were not regular Linux users. They were not regular KDE users even. They were very hardcore KDE people that yep. have a deep understanding of the system. And this is right. why I wanted to use Plasma myself because I don't have experience with it. And a lot of people didn't like some of the things I said. And that's understandable. But I think a, a big problem with when you're a developer in a project for, I don't know, five years, ten years, or you've been using Plasma since KDE 3, when it was still called KDE, you build a lot of these... They might not necessarily be workarounds per se, like workarounds for bugs, but you've got a workflow. Like, you have a yeah. system that... You understand how Plasma works, and it inherently makes sense to you. So any, like, weird UX things about it, just... It's invisible to you. Yeah, they... People were very angry when I said... Like, when I got confused about opening up the, um... The widget edit... Or the, the, the bar edit, for example. Because I... There was, like, a di distinction between edit mode on the desktop and edit mode on yeah. the, the panel. And people were like, no, this is really obvious. Like, no, it's actually not... If you've been no, that one was that one was totally legit, and mm -hmm. that one was kind of like a five minute fix for Marco, who's already made it much. Well, easier. my understanding it had been discussed um, before in the past as well. It just no one had implemented it. Yeah, a lot of things are like that. Uh, that was totally a legit one. I think deliberately not installing a ton of critical packages just to see what breaks was a little bit more of a enough rope to hang yourself in the foot situation. The reason um, why I do that is, I. I look. I'm actually. I am gonna blame part of this on KD itself. I don't. I think you're just a masochist. Let's, no, let's I am. Yes, it. true. But <laughs> I don't like. So with the the KD packaging guidelines, I I don't like the fact that there are this like minimal subset of packages that distro should install, but a lot of things still expect other things to be installed, even though they are optional. That's my main mm -hmm. thing. And I, I talk, I've talked to a couple of people about this that. Well, and that's that's a bug on our side, but there's like a what is optional, right? Mm -hmm. Like, let's take case screen for example, sure. which I recall you had issues. I don't with. know why that's a separate. Mm -hmm. I know, I know now why it's a separate package. I it be, there's a whole like legacy reasons. Dave was like, yeah, there was like competing it's not, things. It's not just with case legacy screen. reasons either, because let's say you're um, uh, installing Plasma on a system where there's always guaranteed to be only one screen. Sure. And you want it to be as minimal as possible. Like, I don't know, an embedded system with a Raspberry Pi or something like that. Um, or a, a car. A car that is not the Mercedes EQS that has three screens. Um, if there's only ever going to be one screen and you want your, your package that gets delivered to users to be as small as possible so that OTA updates are really fast, you don't want case screen in there, right? I, so it's, it's not an error. To I not will have disagree screen. with you specifically because things like game controller configuration are part of just just part of plasma yeah it's valid um that's if, totally valid if, because that if is all of these settings were different modules understandable but like random things are not modules like k screen's one of those ones or like about this system like that's in a separate module like i, I don't like, I, I get it from that perspective, sure. In, like, a situation where you want something super minimal and, like, it, the user's never going to get to the system settings anyway. Like, that's understandable, but mm -hmm. I think being in, like, this weird middle state makes it confusing. It's totally valid um, that we do have some things that could be totally irrelevant that are bundled inside workspace or desktop. Um, and that's, that's another conversation because they're... As you've seen, there are multiple schools of thought within KDE. One is separate everything as much as possible and do tiny little packages so you can have only what you need. And then there are other schools of thought in KDE that say, make it easy for people to get like a good usable system without having to know the details. And KDE is a big org. There isn't necessarily a, a consensus on this yet. Mm -hmm. um, you'll see, for example, with KDE frameworks, which are like 80 packages, Back in the KDE 4 days, that was one package. It was called KDE Lips. And it was huge and it was like 500 megabytes. And people complained. They said, oh, KDE is so bloated. I tried to install Dolphin and it wants to pull in this KDE Libs nonsense that's half a gig. What's wrong with KDE? So we took that to heart and we split everything up for Plasma 5 for, for the 
version five, and we split it into KDE frameworks. Now, when people go and they do, you know, sudo apt get dolphin, they say, oh, wow, it wants to pull in 40 new packages. KDE is so bloated. Right. So you kind of can't win no matter which way you go with this. And to a certain extent, there's no, there's no getting around the fact that it's just big. Like, KDE stuff is big. Plasma is big. The workspace is big. There's a lot of stuff going on here. And so we rely on distros. We rely on distros to do a good job of packaging this. And that gets back to an earlier topic I discussed, which was vertical integration. And it's why I think it's so important for us to have a distro, mm -hmm. not because we want it to be the only distro that people use, but because we want to showcase what we think a well-packaged KDE distro looks like. Mm -hmm. um, not again, not to say that everybody else is wrong, but we want to show what we think is right. Uh, because sometimes it's, uh, it's an understandable thing. Like another example, a thing that happened right after the launch of Plasma 6 was we heavily advertised that the desktop cube was going to be back. And people on Arch started using the desktop cube and it didn't work. Mm -hmm. And it didn't work because of an Arch packaging decision to make a key dependency optional rather I, than mandatory. When I talked to Dave now, about this, he was saying it's because KD add-ons is a it 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 I, I yeah. it, it shouldn't be a it shouldn't be one thing. It really shouldn't be. There are so many no, different there's valid. so many different like, things that, I, yeah. I discussed I discussed this with a prominent arch packager and his his opinion wasn't invalid. Um because it is a giant stupid grab bag repo with a lot of mm -hmm. random stuff in it. And because of that it does pull in a lot of dependencies. But on the other hand, it doesn't really make sense, in my opinion, to make any of those dependencies optional because then yeah. something is just broken and you won't know why. So it's it's a situation where nobody is really right or wrong. It needs to be redone. Mm -hmm. Like what we need to do is split up that repo. But let's say we did, right? Let's say we split up KDE Plasma add-ons, which mm -hmm. has something like 15 widgets in it. Should we make 15 new packages? If we did that, wouldn't that make life harder for people like you mm. who are trying to install things package by package and wondering why things are missing? I think that would... So there's a lot of things I don't care about in pl uh, Plasma add-ons. Like most of it, actually. Uh, pretty much all of it. Uh, there's like one little thing. Um, I don't recall. Uh, there was... Yeah, I don't remember what it was. There was one thing I wanted from it. Regardless. Um, I so one, I think if you so have some prominent ones are like the weather widget, which is in Plasma add-ons. Yeah, sure. Let's say you and want there's that. also the large icons task switcher, which is very popular and people like that. Right, right. And there's right. the timer widget that's also in there. So you know, if if each one of these was a separate package, then wouldn't that just be more error prone for people wanting a complete system? I or think... maybe what we should do is put those in core and have those in like Plasma desktop, then everything else should just be distributed via store.kde.org or something. There are a lot of things we could do here um, because frankly, the approach of having a giant meta repo that has everything stuck in it is pretty lazy. And it also doesn't scale because the more things we put in it, the more it You're forces You're eventually going to get to a 500 megabyte package. This is way too big, yeah. So, so you know, yeah, there's there's something that's that's definitely going to need to be going to need to be done there at some point. And, and that's, that's going to be a discussion because it will reignite this debate over should we split everything up into tiny pieces mm -hmm. or should we make it easier for people to get a complete system? And I don't think there is a right or wrong answer there. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's why I think when you do decide to kind of build your system from pieces, you have to expect that there's going to be a little bit of friction there because it's, it's like getting DIY furniture, right? When you get DIY furniture, you got to put it together mm -hmm. and it comes with instructions, but let's say you don't read those instructions. Well, if you don't read the instructions, you're going to have a hard time putting the furniture together and whose fault is that? It's yours. Um, and the equivalent of the instructions that we provide are that distro packaging recommendations page. Those are effectively the instructions for how to get a good complete plasma setup over there. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think you gotta, you gotta read the instructions or you gotta get a, uh, an out of the box pre-built product or else you're, you're in for an adventure. 
that's my new favorite word to describe <laughs> the experience of using uh, one of these DIY or less stable systems. I, I don't know how you feel like this, but I, I feel like in these cases where how like let's let's say with the cube for example i don't i don't know if this is something you would say is worth fixing or if it's something that's just on the distros to make sure it doesn't happen but i didn't like that it silently errors out so if you don't have uh cute quick th whatever it's called the dependency the the 3d one um if you try to open up the cube it just doesn't, it just doesn't work. Yeah, it doesn't tell you anything. There's no error from Plasma. It's not like missing library or anything like that. It just does nothing. I don't know whether that... Yeah. And there are a couple of places where that happens across Plasma that you could argue are entirely the fault of me or entirely the fault of Arch for the way they package. And maybe, maybe you could argue that the whole idea of there being a Plasma desktop package that can be installed by itself shouldn't be possible. And maybe... Distro shouldn't even allow that. There should be these things that are hard dependencies. Like the, the basic package list, like the meta package, should be the only thing that exists. Maybe that's fair. I don't know what your thought on this is, but just give me your general so thoughts. It's, it's a complicated situation. I don't think there is necessarily a right or a wrong answer because it depends on your perspective here. Mm -hmm. Like you could very easily make the point that, oh, distros have mispackaged our software and it's up to them to get it right we shouldn't have to show error messages for their problems. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a valid perspective. But then there's also the perspective that says, one moment. <laughs> so good, so good. Busy house. So <laughs> there's also the perspective that says, well, the fact that it's possible for distros to mispackage this means that it's up to us to provide some sort of blame shifting so that the user at least Forgetting, forgetting about whose fault it is, the user knows what they can do. Right. Um, I tend to be in this camp personally, because I think that you can't rely on people to understand all of that stuff themselves. <laughs> Sorry. We're good, we're good. As you can tell, my life is very busy. Um, but that's okay, because better, better busy than not busy enough. Sure, so, yeah. I tend to fall on the side of when there's an error of some sort, we need to show it to the user so that they at least can know what to troubleshoot. And better yet, we need to tell the user whose fault it is so that they know who to file a bug report on. This gets back to what I was saying with Discover, where we worked very hard to make it clear whose problem it was and who they could go to for help. And in fact, for the cube effect, I believe we did just that. So we now have a, a visible error message that appears on the screen when the cube couldn't be loaded. So if you're missing that cute quick 3D dependency that we've been talking about for the last 15 minutes, uh, it, it will say, blah, here's an ugly QML error, missing dependency, blah, blah, blah. And it's written in technical gibberish, but at least you can Google it, right? right. You can just copy paste it so that you find like a If you're technically somewhere. knowledgeable enough, you'll say, oh, I'm missing that package. I'm going to go install it. Oh, why didn't my distro pre-install it? I'm going to go tell them to pre-install it and so on. Mm -hmm. So I think personally, if there are cases where it is possible for something to be mispackaged, we should make it easy for people to see that error without having to crack open the journal log. Mm -hmm. Of course, that's more work. It's a lot yeah. more work. And error, uh, effort is finite and mm -hmm. there are limited resources. So it's it's all about increasing those resources so that more of this stuff that we all want to happen can happen. 